Speedrunning is filled with such diverse discussions and debates. This is the beauty of the hobby and why a lot of us constantly return with new views and opinions. Like any form of criticism, whether in film, music or even sport, it's all subjective and no one's usually right or wrong with their own opinions. Some people believe speedrunning a game glitchless is the only correct way to run a game. Some people also believe using enhanced hardware, like backwards compatible consoles, is unfair and should be banned. Speedrunning debates are like a yin yang effect. You can argue a particular point across on why you believe a certain way, however there always seems to be some sort of counter-argument regardless how relevant it may be. Repetition is the fourth founding stereotype of speedrunning. I'm not kidding, we play the same video game every day for countless months, sometimes years. Repetition tends to be the leading cause of debate for people's dislike towards a particular speed game. In today's video, I plan on reflecting on these points and seeing if my video will make people reflect on previous games they may have viewed in a different way. This video will mainly be reflecting on the Kingdom Hearts series due to recent debate on if Kingdom Hearts 3 is fire spam heavy or not. Whether I believe Cage 3 is fire spam or not, I do believe we are approaching this discussion with the wrong idea. It's not about how many times fire is used, it's about how repetitive the speedrun is as a whole. Now the most constructive way to reflect on this question is by watching three runs from every game in the series and writing down point for point exactly what the runner does to inflict damage and calculate statistics on how often a particular method is used and then taking into consideration if the player is just exploiting broken mechanics or using genuine strategy to play through the game efficiently. The best way to break down the information is by assigning each fight with particular categories assigned to them. As an example, physical, magic, shot locks or limits, commands, etc. I will refer to these categories to let you know how each game will be broken down. Myself and the research team went ahead and watched the run from each game on 0.5 speed, jotting down exactly what caused damage to enemies and bosses. So this isn't what technically is meant to happen in a fight, this is exactly what happened in the run. I also include Cure and for the magic slot just for kicks. Another thing to note is that I only included force fights for Kingdom Hearts 1, 2 and 3, since the main debate tends to tie between those three games. However, to stay fair, I also threw in the side games, but only counted the statistics for boss fights due to time constraints and staying relevant to the main three titles. I will now break down how the statistic is counted for in this video, just to reinstate that this may not be the best way to calculate a statistic for this discussion, so the document is free for you to copy and play around with yourself. 
Physicals involve any type of physical attack used with the Keyblade. Magic is when any spell is used in a fight, upgraded magic still counts as one. Summons are counted as one, and not by their hits due to time constraints on ways of making a fair comparison. Limits are when the player uses a special ability, which comes at a cost of either MP, Command, or Focus. So yes, Shotlock is included as well. However, something like Dance Call or Shotlock will only be counted as one, and not by the amount of hits done. Kingdom Hearts Final Mix is the game that welcomed me to the world of speedrunning. Its wonderfully simplistic route and straightforward strategies for bosses got me heavily involved with the game. As time passed, I found a new love for perfecting small details that most spectators would overlook to be able to compete for the top spot. For Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, I wrote down strategies for 61 fights. Out of those 61 fights, 32 relied on physical hits, 22 fights relied on magic, 5 relied on limits, and lastly, summons were used twice. Breaking this down on a pie chart, 53% of fights in the speedrun relied mostly on physical attacks, 36 for magic, 8% for limits, and lastly, 3% for summons. Now to throw another statistic at you, misuses of physical attack, not including ours, 1,164 times. Casts a spell 212 times, uses 38 R's Arcanums, and activates a summon 3 times. Breaking this down to a percentage chart, this is how it would look. However, how about the concept that because an R's Arcanum is just 12 physical hits done efficiently, some people may think, hey, shouldn't that be included with the physical category? So I did just that. Combining the 1,164 hits, plus the 38 times R's was used, since very little R's Arcanums are not the full 12 hits, here is how physical versus magic and summons looks. Now yes, I understand the damage scaling of say a gravity on Behemoth 2 versus a physical hit on Dark Side does not accumulate the same. But due to how difficult that would be to math and guess, I just went down the simpler road of calculating by actions performed versus damage dealt. Although we do rely mostly on physical hits to succeed in fights, it's not simply a shitty made up KH2 meme where we mash one button relentlessly without any thought process. When limits are used, they are not just purely spam the moment they are available, they can be used to create iframes of the player, such as using an R's Arcanum on the World of Chaos face, or during attacks from Maleficent. It can also be used to help with DM skipping bosses like Ansem 2 as well. I will not just ride the KH1 hype train without commenting on how magic isn't very balanced in particular fights, and can be used heavily to a runner's advantage. In Dragon Maleficent for example, if you are efficient enough, you can defeat her without her having much chance to move or attack. So do I believe that this is something that is simple to do? Absolutely not. Executing sub strats on Dragon Maleficent is considered by many as one of the hardest strats the game has to offer. Every 3 seconds, you are required to execute 10 inputs. If you misclick any of those inputs, there is a strong chance the strat will fail. This is an example of where I believe exploited and repetitive mechanics can be positive and constructive for the evolution of the speedrun. More on this point as the video progresses. Now I may not claim to believe that this is the best speedrun option the series has to offer, however anyone can pick up the game very easily since it mostly relies on physical combos which is the main combat option most players would use when they casual the game. When runners evolve they will learn about smaller details which can save them lots of time such as DM skips in Riku 2 and Ansem 2 and how to optimise other fights with positioning and timing. Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, the first of many games to exclusively release on a Nintendo console, has always been known as the speed game that tends to go under the radar. As many know, this game relies on a different style of combat from the original by using a deck of cards rather than the abilities you have at your disposal. This requires you to grind for particular styled cards to enter rooms and also to use in combat. The speedrun heavily relies on its use of the Berserk enemy card. Berserk is an ability that exists in many of the Kingdom Hearts games where if a player is on critical health, they are granted the chance of increased damage output to enemies. Runners often use this ability to their advantage by routing in specific attacks to help their health get to critical and carefully timing when to attack to prevent the risk of dying. Sadly, not adding in all the encounters of this game, it does not make the statistics very subjective, but here they are anyways. Out of 19 recorded fights, 14 predominantly used physical attacks equaling 74%, whilst the other 26% had 5 fights rely on slates such as Fire and Blizzard Raid. As for the action stats, there was a total of 450 hits landed, with only 4 magic spells casted, and 72 slates used. Realistically, these stats would be nowhere near the same if we included all encountered fights, since magic is far more effective for grinding cards. However, for what was recorded, these stats were nowhere near as bad as I imagined they would be, considering Kingdom Hearts is a hack and slash RPG. 74% and 85% for fights and actions is certainly not the worst result the series sees.
We now arrive at the bonus game included in every copy of 2 Final Mix, which was a remaster of the original Game Boy Advance title, Chain of Memories. Rechain of Memories by many is considered to be the most repetitive the series has to offer. This reason being due to the repetitive card grinding route used in Agrabah in the early game, as well as Magic being the 100% best way to defeat everything and anything this game has to offer. From a statistical analysis done by my good friend Master Glint, he recorded 25 boss fights, and out of those 25, 23 came back with the main use being Magic for each fight, with a percentage of 92%. Why is it not 25 fights you may ask? Well, the only two fights recorded that do not have a predominant use of magic were the first two fights recorded in the run, Guard Armor and Axel. These two fights are very early in the game, so naturally the player does not have a lot of magic cards in their deck to use from in these fights. So if not for that, every fight in this run will mainly use magic. You may see a game later on that suffers with the same effect. For action statistics, only 117 hits landed on an enemy in the run, and also magic was cast at a total of 178 times, making it 60% magic and 40% physical. The main reason magic is not higher once again is due to how much damage magic already does. There is no need for a high amount of magic use due to the enemy dying so quickly with the spells like Fyraga and Blazaga. Speaking from experience of running this game in the past, I do find Recall to be a lot of fun to mess around with friends in races or just as a fun side game to do. However, you may find grinding this game tedious over time, so I would suggest checking out the Riku story instead. Well here we are. This game is considered as the humble beginnings for the series and the birth of a great future in the speedrunning scene. With many talented runners coming and going over the years, the development of the speedruns in all three variants of Kingdom Hearts 2 is phenomenal, but I will be covering that in another video. Kingdom Hearts 2 has stood the test of time and is still regarded as one of the greatest JRPGs ever made, as well as one of the most exciting speedruns to date. Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix is in most people's eyes the most technical game in the series, which showcases some of the most complex strategies used in any fight in the series. The diversity in strategy, routing, and execution throughout each category and difficulty mode gives each run an identity of its own, which unfortunately, other games suffer a lacking amount from. To be honest, I really did want to break down the stats for this game, since I knew how difficult the challenge would be to note every action that was done in this particular speedrun. However, Insert Logic came to my aid and made one of the most impressive documents I have ever seen. I decided just to hyperlink his document with my own so you could be redirected to his work. Please, take your time and look over this carefully, as he went above and beyond detailing everything with such fine care. So the speedrun has been counted for 110 fights, excluding Dragon Xemnas due to its nature of combat. Within those 110 fights, we calculated that 86 of those fights relied on physical, 14 relied on magic, 8 on limits, and lastly 2 on summons. To break these stats down to a percentage format, this is how it would look. As for action statistics, we recorded a total of 1,953 hits, 383 spells casted, 43 limits were activated, and lastly, 17 summons were used. Once again, here is how the stats look in a percentage format. Reflecting on these numbers, I do believe Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix is the most balanced speed game in the entire series. Yes, I do understand that this is not a 25-25 statistic, which would make it perfectly balanced. However, this game's genre is an action RPG, and as such, the main ability used in combat is physical attacks, since you can do it as many times as you want in as many ways as you need. With magic spells and summons, you are confined to your MP and summon gauge to be able to use these abilities, which makes perfect sense since you could stagger enemies in place forever. This game also offers the perfect blend of combo mix-ups. Instead of Cage 1's style of getting in close and hacking away at as many physical combos as possible, or Kingdom Hearts 3's use of ranged magic, you have a blend of using many of the abilities unlocked throughout the game to chain physical hits, magic, summons and limits all into one sequence, which makes the game visually look breathtaking and also makes it the most complex and challenging speed game to learn. If you wish for a more elaborate explanation on this point, please check out MyDax's video Beyond the X Button, which covers in detail the many useful mechanics Kingdom Hearts 3 has at its disposal. In September of 2007, Nomura arrived at the Tokyo Game Show with news which would shake up the Kingdom Hearts fanbase for many years. Nomura wanted to focus attention on bringing the series to handheld devices, and announced Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, Recoded, and lastly, 358 over 2 days. Kingdom Hearts 358 over 2 days was the first to arrive to the Nintendo DS on May 30th of 2009, with the US version arriving much later in September of 2009. The game received a variety of criticism and praise from the fanbase, and still does to this day, due to its controversial characters and game design. Sadly, there is not much discussion on this game in the speedrun realm, as it is the least popular round speed game in the entire Kingdom Hearts series. The main reason for this being that capturing DS gameplay is very difficult and costly due to many businesses closing their doors. 
Also, the game is very long and difficult to learn. However, with the speedrun pack I made for this game a few months back, I'm hoping to see more people give this game a try. I will also be doing a speedrun retrospective on this game in the future, since I believe this game needs more of people's attention, as it's an absolute gem which does go unnoticed. Doing the research for this speed game was a lot of fun, and I was not surprised to find out the results for this game are a lot more balanced than others in the series. I wrote down 35 fights in this run, with 19 mainly using magic, whilst the other 16 relied on physical attacks. If we were to include every mission in the game, these stats may be vastly different, since magic takes over physical's role around the mid-game, as it's more effective on Heartless. Now we move on to the action stats. 154 hits were counted in the run, which does not include limits, magic was cast 171 times, and lastly limits were used 45 times. Broken down you will see that 45% of actions done by the runner were magic, 42 were physical, and lastly 13% were limits. Now some may dispute that limits and physical attacks are the same thing, which is fair since it's a burst of consecutive physical attacks in a short space of time. Comparing limits in early game to late game, I came to a rough average of about 12 hits a limit. If I was to combine those 540 limit hits with 154 counted physical attacks, we would get a total of 694 combined attacks done by the player. Here is how the chart looks now with the limits and physical attacks combined together. Just like Chain of Memories, I did skip out on a lot of fights where magic and physicals get used a heavy amount, so be wary. But seeing that the results come in almost down the middle was very surprising, as I felt that this run is routed around chaining together combos of magic on heartless enemies. The difference I find with this game's magic system over the others is it does not reward you for standing still and spamming one spell the entire time. Due to the unique panel menu layout in the game, you are restricted to a particular quantity of magic spells unless an item like an Aoife is used, so positioning yourself to hit several enemies and carefully avoiding their counterattacks is vital since an enemy can easily kill you since none of the spells protect you very well. Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep is considered by many as their personal favourite in the whole series, due to its complex game design of weaving three different style playthroughs with each character having their own unique traits and bosses to go against. Being that this game is split into three different playthroughs, the speedruns are timed in a similar fashion. This can be troublesome attempting to make a fair comparison of statistics, I came to the conclusion that the fairest way to calculate the stats was to combine all three runs into one and calculate a percentage for each category of actions. With that being said, Birth by Sleep's predominant use of actions in fights was magic, with 15 out of 37 fights relying on casting spells. There was also 14 fights which relied on limits, with 2 of those relying on commands whilst the other 12 relied on shot locks. Lastly, 8 out of the 37 fights relied on physical attacks, with most of those fights coming from terror and upward stories. As for action statistics, 212 physical hits landed on enemies equaling 37% of actions, magic was cast at a total of 225 times equaling 40%, Commands were used 62 times, equaling 11%, and lastly, shot locks were used 63 times, equaling 12% of actions. Equaling similar to 358 over 2 days, it is interesting to see how magic and physicals almost meet down the middle, with some stories relying on magic more than others. My personal main concern with Birth by Sleep is in the endgame of Terra and Ventus. If you look at the document carefully, you will see that the Fire Surge and Shot Lock are used very heavily later on in the game due to the amount of damage both abilities do, as well as the lack of vulnerability to bosses. Kingdom Hearts Recoded is a DS remake of the original title Coded, which was released exclusively in Japan on mobile devices back in 2007. Arguably the most disliked game in the series due to its lack of progression to the grand story, this 2010 remake is a treasured speed game by the small community which coincide with it, due to its difficult nature of combat, and also due to the fact that it is the most balanced command deck mechanics in the series. Due to the fact there are many auto-scroller boss battles, I chose to skip all of those fights and only include influential boss battles. This also does not include Heartless Waves in the data segments. I recorded a total of 18 fights, with all 18 relying mostly on physical attacks to get through fights. Now, let's take a look at why all the fights recorded rely on physical attacks so much. As I mentioned before, I believe this game to have the most balanced command deck in the series, due to the refresh speed of commands. As you can see here, in Dream Drop Distance, a player can almost loop his entire deck over and over again due to the refresh speed of commands. However, if you look at Recoded's gameplay, you can see that the player has to wait quite some time between each command reloading. Some of this contributes to the fact that summoning Balloonra is slower than, say, executing a Triple Fire Rug or a Judgment Triad. However, due to the fact that unlike other games, you cannot rely on a really strong ability early on, you are forced to work with the physical combos at your disposal. Now to cover the action statistics, a total of 415 hits connected with bosses, 55 spells were casted, which includes 18 of them being Cure, and lastly a total of 39 commands were used, which I also decided to include Mega Flare. 
When put together, we discovered that 81% of actions done were physical attacks, whilst magic and commands had an underwhelming 10 and 7%. Let's just keep in mind I am only documenting the main 80% of each game. If I was to refer to Gosu or NG+, you may find this game can be very unbalanced due to what is possible in those categories. Who knows, maybe the person watching this video will be inspired to take on Recoded and find discoveries which puts my statistics completely out of whack. I hope someday that does happen. We are now at the breaking point where the next piece of information I divulge may be taken in a disagreement due to my views and overall assessment of this particular speed game. Dream Drop Distance was released on the 3DS in March of 2012. The game had a lot of built up excitement due to the return of being able to play between two of the most beloved characters in the series and experimenting with their diverse style of combat. Unfortunately, none of this really exists in the speedrun of this game due to one particular thing. Balloon spells. Not very long after the game's release, players had already discovered that Balloon was the most broken ability in the game and could be used to cheese your way through almost any fight the game had to offer. After discovering how more balloon commands could be acquired, all that was left was to buff your character with MP haste and attack, and you were basically ready to go. Dream Drop Distance was the second game under the Osaka team's belt, and sadly, many of the problems found in the gameplay of Birth by Sleep recreated themselves in this game. For a better detailed explanation on this point, I highly advise checking out Bloody Biscuit's video, The Turning Point, where he covers the lack of balance in Birth by Sleep, which has plenty of similarities with Dream Drop Distance. For Dream Drop Distance, I counted a total of 21 fights, not including Chernobog due to its nature of combat. Out of those 21 fights, 20 came back relying on magic. HA! Suck shit Recoded, you unbalanced piece of shit! Now don't get it twisted. Yes, Recoded had a 100% result of physical attacks being reliant in fights. But let's just remember, it's an action RPG. Kingdom Hearts' sole combat is about using your weapon, the Keyblade, and attacking enemies with it whilst throwing in mix-ups of magic, summons and limits to make the flow of combat smooth and fresh without finding itself becoming too repetitive. However, for 95% of the run to rely on a secondary source of damage, you can tell a game like Dream Drop Distance does not share a similarity to Kingdom Hearts 1 or 2, where the end results were far different. With every fight in the game relying on magic, discluding the first fight in the game, where two or four commands are magic spells, you can piece the run together in three steps. 1. Find broken ability. 2. Level up characters' magic stats. 3. Go to town on every boss and heartless encounter. To further back up my point, here are the action stats for this run. So if we are to include all hits and commands, such as quick blitz, there are a total of 56 hits landed on bosses, with 312 spells casted, 289 of those being balloon spells, 11 being cure, and 8 being zero grabbers up. If we combine the total spells and hits together, you will see that 85% of actions performed in fights recorded are magic, whilst the upper 15% being physical, which were mostly performed at the beginning of the run, where the player had less balloon spells. I will revise over some of these earlier criticisms when all the game stats have been laid out on the table, and we can construct together a comparison to see if my views relate to the final results. Kingdom Hearts Whatever the Fuck This Is Called released January 12, 2017 for Japan, with Whatever the Fuck This Game Bundle Is Called. After announcing that Kingdom Hearts 3 would transition from its traditional game engine to Unreal Engine 4, they decided to release a short prologue filling in more story elements and giving fans a taste of how Kingdom Hearts 3 would feel on a modern day console. Many new gameplay elements were introduced into the game, with many old ones returning too, such as shot locks, magic and air step. This being the shortest speedrun in the series, only clocking in around 20 minutes, there is not a lot of fights to cover. However, there is a lot going on in each fight which I found very unique and interesting. In 0.2, when hits and magic are dished out, three arrows will slowly show themselves above the command menu, allowing you to do a special finisher which can be very effective in fights. Seeing how magic and combos are chained together to achieve this brings a very much balanced result. Out of 19 fights recorded, 7 relied mainly on physical attacks, whilst the other 4 relied on magic which makes for 64% of fights relying on the physical hits, and the other 36 relying on magic. For action statistics, there are a total of 104 hits, including Spellweaver as a single large hit. This statistic might need to be re-looked at since it doesn't seem right including Spellweaver as only one hit. For magic spells casted, there was a total of 122, and lastly 9 shot locks per year. Broken down to a percentage, you will see that 51% is magic, 45% is physical, and 4% is shot locks. Here we are, at the game which sparked the whole idea for this video. Kingdom Hearts 3 was announced for development at Sony's conference at E3 in 2013. Five and a half years later, the game finally released in many people's approval and also disappointment. This game is considered to be one of, if not the most controversial in the series due to how much of an anticipated wait there was for this game. 
Being the final game in the story arc, many people hoped for a well-respected ending which would tie up all the loose ends and bring new innovative combat which took inspiration from the Tokyo Team's games. In terms of story, myself and many others agree that Nomura's ability to piece together a simple narrative declined rapidly as the series progressed, with more and more titles releasing. The gameplay however is the real meat of the debate, where many people come to fight and defend Kingdom Hearts 3's reputation. The most common discussion is comparing the combat and gameplay mechanics of Kingdom Hearts 3 to Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. However, I will not be dipping my hand into that conversation and more into a comparison of how this game stacks up as a speedrun compared to the others. The main debate with my idea is if Kingdom Hearts 3 is magic spam or not. The reason for this debate is right from its launch, many of the runners learned that fire was the most effective method against bosses, especially in the endgame, due to it being a heat seeking magic which deals a high amount of damage and can also be dispersed very quickly. With routing still being at its beta stage of development, most people relied purely on fires and ethers. As time passed, many runners came together to piece creative ways to save time on fires that did not use the main method of fire. However, due to the disappointment many people had with Kingdom Hearts 3 in general, and with the speed game looking like it would be another Dream Drop Distance situation, many were unsatisfied with the idea of speedrunning Kingdom Hearts 3 at all. As the months passed, many people put time into fighting strategy besides the usual magic abuse and found many interesting strats using summons and shot locks, but sadly, that is as far as the evolution went for strategy. Physical combos were very pointless due to the lacking amount of damage versus magic based attacks, and also the way fights were designed, it was not an efficient method either. This is not to say I do not enjoy the game or the speedrun myself. For several months I ran the game and I did have a blast for a while, however over time I found myself dreading the end game since it's such a fire spam fiasco. Let me explain further. In Kingdom Hearts 3 I wrote down 73 fights from the 2019 SGDQ showcase. Out of those 73 fights, 13 relied on physical, 38 on magic, 13 on summons, and lastly 5 on shot locks. Breaking it into a pie chart, you will see that 52% of fights recorded mostly use magic. However, what makes my method easily debatable is the fact that I only go off a pure count of action. I am confident that 3 fires does not accumulate the same amount of damage as 3 physical attacks, so many of these factors can be disputed and looked at in better detail. In terms of action statistics, there was a total of 362 hits landed, which equals 29%, 876 magic spells were cast, which equals 67%, 30 summons, which equals 2%, and lastly, 40 shot locks, which equals 3%. In comparison percentage-wise, this game equals similar statistics of Rechain of Memories. When looking back over my notes, I notice once the player arrives at the Keyblade Graveyard, every single fight excluding one relies on magic, with 4 physical hits landing and 317 magic spells being cast, that is only 1.2% of actions being physical hits. What is crazy is that 36% of the magic cast throughout the entire run is in the final 20 minutes. In conclusion, do I believe that Kingdom Hearts 3 is fire spam? No, I do not believe this game suffers with recoms issues throughout the whole game. However, I will say that the game suffers from the same fault the other Osaka games have, which is that all speed games rely on an exploited method of damage output to achieve the same results on almost every single fight in the game. For Kingdom Hearts 3, however, instead of it being Balloon Row or Surge, it transitions between Magic, Summons or Shot Locks, with all three statistics combining in at 76% of fights and 72% of actions. Now that all the stats are laid out on the table, we can now carefully construct together comparisons against particular games in the series to see how they stack up and why some may have differences to others. Firstly, I will put all the games together in the first list and compare off my first method of calculation using the most actions per fight. To explain quickly, if say in Kingdom Hearts 1 fighting Trick Master, if I do 15 landed hits versus 14 magic spells casted on the enemy, then physical attacks would win over magic. Now just to reiterate, I understand this method is not exactly the best way of fairly calculating what is abused more, but due to time and sheer difficulty of fairly calculating the damage, I left it to actions prompted. Secondly, this will be comparing off how many fights predominantly use a particular action over how many fights there are in total. The reason for this is some games only have less than 15 fights counted for, where others have up to 50 plus. Comparing against physical, this is how it will look. As you can see, Recoded leads the way with 100% of fights relying on physical attacks. We did touch base on this earlier, but just to reinstate, it is due to the speed of commands refreshing in the deck, and also that the commands are not as overpowered as other handheld games. Taking away the side games, you will see that Kingdom Hearts 2 leads the way on this comparison, which honestly surprises me. I always consider Kingdom Hearts 1 as the more hack and slash style speed game compared to Kingdom Hearts 2. However, what I did not consider is in Kingdom Hearts 1, where magic is used in a fight, it is used very heavily. Let's use the Power Wilds or the End of the World fights as an example. These spells are best used for crowd controlling and eliminating big piles of Heartless. 
In Kingdom Hearts 2, however, spells are not comboed together too heavily, excluding the Blizzard Thunder Reflect Guard Break combo in Roxas. The abilities work very similar in Kingdom Hearts 2 to Kingdom Hearts 1. They are great for crowd control, and also good for eliminating enemies. The best example of this is in the cave fight in the Land of Dragons. What Kingdom Hearts 2 does better over Kingdom Hearts 1 is it's tie in with physical abilities with the range of magic at your disposal. Whether it's Magic Plus Explosion into English, or Reflect Plus Slapshot into FM, there are plenty of examples where magic and physical combos tie into the same sequence. This is what I believe makes Kingdom Hearts 2 a more technical style speedrun over the others. The amount of moves a player can do within 15 seconds pales in comparison to any other game in the series. Next we'll take a look at the magic category. When tying all the games together, it may come as no surprise that Dream Drop Distance leads on this margin, with 95% of fights relying mostly on magic, which we know is due to the sheer unbalanced damage output Balloon offers. However, taking the side games away, we can see that Kingdom Hearts 3 leads on this statistic. Surprise much? Well, no. I'd like to hope that most people who are knowledge on the speedrunning series saw this coming. Due to how efficiently fires could be casted, once you build a route based around magic, the reality starts to sell in from there. What I believe makes the repetition worse is the higher the magic stat is, the more effective shot locks and summons will be, which completely kills the need to ever use physical combos since all three of those actions do up to five times the damage of physical attacks. Who knows, maybe it's a good thing Kingdom Hearts 3 does not rely heavily on a combo game due to how atrocious its guard is. Next up is limits. Limits are when the player decides to use a special offense ability, which usually comes at the cost of MP or a command. Limits often deal a burst of damage very quickly. Examples of these are, but not limited to, Ars Arcanum, Dance Call, Quick Blitz, and lastly, I decided to also include Shot Locks, which I understand is not a limit, however it is a special attack which can only be dispersed when you have focus, which is somewhat similar to MP. Shot Locks may be a controversial decision to include, but it was mainly due to the fact Shot Locks only exist in 3 out of the 10 games I counted for, so it seemed like a wasted statistic if I did not find a way to incorporate it. Breaking the stats down, Birth by Sleep came through as the winner of this conversion due to its strong use of Shot Lock. You may see some of the games in this series do not show up on this list, which is due to the fact that games like Recoded and Dream Drop Distance never found a heavy use for limits, due to the lacking damage it does compared to combos or magic casting. Taking away the side games, you can see that Kingdom Hearts 1 leads in this category due to its strong use of Ars Arcanum in the late game. The statistics are quite balanced across the board, with two final mix in Kingdom Hearts 3 both being 1% behind. For the final comparison of most actions done in a fight, we will now look at summons. Summons are used in a wide variety of games in this series, either to disperse a quick attack, platforming, or to assist Sora with crowd control. Due to how Square designs summons in most games, they cannot be dispersed at free will without it coming at a hefty cost. When used, however, they often deal a ton of damage or help with eliminating big crowds of enemies like Final Rest in Kingdom Hearts 1. Funny enough, the only three games which have any form of statistics for this column is the main three titles, with Kingdom Hearts 3 once again winning in this department. Unlike the first game, both Kingdom Hearts 2 and 3 both have the ability to skip the summoning animation, which makes summons more accessible in speedruns. However, where these two games differ is Kingdom Hearts 2 summons are strongly used for crowd control purposes, which tie in with physical combos and magic where Kingdom Hearts 3 summons are used to mop the floor with bosses, as seen on screen. And yes, that was my genuine reaction when I was told, and I quote, I hear Ralph's not bad in this fight. Honestly, I do partially blame myself for Kingdom Hearts 3 leading in this statistic, as I found out when strat hunting in Monstropolis that Meow Wow was by far the best viable option in this entire world, excluding like two or three fights. Now we move on to the action statistics from each game. Basically, me and several people who did the research on these games, tallied up the total amount of actions performed in runs. Whether that was physical hits landed, magic spells casted, or limits performed, all the info was taken into account and put into a percentage. With all the games lined up, you will see that Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories leads for physical attacks. This can be strongly related back to the Berserk route used in Chain of Memories. To quickly explain, Berserk is an ability which exists in many Kingdom Hearts games which increases the damage you output when at critical health. It is incredibly risky but very rewarding, particularly in both Chain of Memories games, where the route is built off taking the right amount of damage to reach Berserk range. After removing the side games, you will see that Kingdom Hearts 1 barely wins over Kingdom Hearts 2, at 82%. As spoken about before, Kingdom Hearts 1 speedruns are built around doing fast and efficient combos on enemies to chew through their health as quickly as possible. What really shows concern is how much of a difference both Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 have from Kingdom Hearts 3. With Magic, Summons and Shot Locks being Cage 3's main use of actions throughout the game, it comes as a curiosity if we'll ever see this percentage reach any higher, or if the number will lower as more uses for Magic are discovered and routed. Without much doubt, I knew Dream Drop Distance would win in this regard, 
with possibly Rechain of Memories coming second due to how powerful magic is in both games, and how commonly these spells could be cast. Taking away the obvious data, we can see in reverse from the physical category, Kingdom Hearts 3 leads over Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 by 52%. With Kingdom Hearts 3 dishing out 4 times the amount of magic to Kingdom Hearts 1, this result, just like the previous, came as no surprise. As you can see on screen, Birth by Sleep has taken the throne for the most used limits in the run. This is due to the appearance of Fire Surge and Shotlock, which is used much more commonly in the Terra story compared to the other two. Taking away the side games again, you can see that Kingdom Hearts 3 wins the comparison again. In all honesty, if I did not include Shotlocks, then Cage 3 would not even be in this comparison, but due to the consistent appearances of Shotlock throughout the entire game, Cage 3 sketches the lead over Kingdom Hearts 1's R's Arkham, which plays a strong role in the later part of the game when the ability is unlocked. Lastly, we'll take a look at the only three games which use summons within the speedrun route, which ironically are the main three games in the series. Honestly, it is challenging finding a new way to say the same thing over and over again, but Kingdom Hearts 3 wins this apartment as well, leading by the way of 1.3%. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you put it into perspective that summons are used 10 times more in Kingdom Hearts 3 than Kingdom Hearts 1, it starts to make you wonder. Honestly though, this statistic could be changing as we speak. No doubt the Kingdom Hearts 3 community is finding other ways to exclude summons in particular fights, but until a better method than Malwow is found for Monstropolis, this percentage will not change a lot. I want to end this video with a very important point. Stats do not mean everything, and I hope that this video does not steer you away from any game in this series, as every game is filled with passionate runners who are very welcoming and dedicated to their craft, and I truly do not want this video to take away anything from their efforts. Taste in speedrunning is always going to be subjective, and I do not believe people flood to a speed game purely due to the stats, but more or less a mixture of nostalgia and the community involved with it. So please, if you are interested in any of these games, then reach out to a community member, as they will always be there to help. In conclusion, I hope people who have had very strong views on particular games in this series walk away with a better perspective, either supporting their judgement, or maybe tweaking their views. This video was a long time coming, and I did promise my followers this video much sooner than when it came out. And for that, I do apologise. I just truly underestimated how long researching every game's inputs would take. And for that, I want to give special thanks to everyone that helped me with this project, whether it was research or with answering questions about some of the games. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more speedrunning content on my channel, please let me know in the comments, as I often juggle where I should put my commitments, as I have many interesting ideas for videos in the future. As well, please chuck a like on this video and subscribe if you want to see more, and share this with your friends. Thank you for watching.